Ooh, Brady. We might just hit enter. All right. Hey, guys. I'm Brennan. Welcome to Nerdish. Um, we've got Levi and... Ooh, there we go. Oh, man. That's not oh, the right one. Dang it. Stop. Thanks, guys. Oh, no. Uh, Levi and Brady are over there Woo! messing with the lights. Ruining um, everything. There there we are. Tonight, I'm going to be covering... Uh, what did I say? Similar, Similar triangles. triangles. And you... Will not nothing. be covering anything. But Brady... I will be covering there it is. outside knowledge in the ACT science section. This knowledge is extremely outside. So what we mean by that is there are questions on the science section uh, where the answer cannot actually be found in the uh, passage, and those are what we call outside knowledge or previous knowledge questions. You have to know that topic before going into it, um, and if you don't, then you take your best guess. You're but cooked. Brady will go into that. Woo! But I won't, so I'm going to get Can out of here. Can you toss me some yeah. rags when you go over there? Thank you. Uh, thanks. All right. So to start, we're going to go over some similar triangles. Now, I went over, I guess a lot of this involved. Here you go, Levi. Sorry. I have an extra marker. Um, for similar triangles, a lot of this has to do with having or knowing your angle identities um, and other triangle identities. Uh, we did a YouTube video on that. Our YouTube is linked everywhere, down below, um, up above for Facebook. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just go and check that out. Um, but I'm not going to go into that in nearly as much detail. Uh, what are sim similar triangles? Why do we care? And what does it mean? So if they're similar, you're probably thinking that means they're kind of the same. Or they're similar. Yeah, all right. Um, so I'm going to have these two triangles and they're going to be similar and there's a number of ways I can prove that. All right, now just looking at them, I can't tell you that they're similar. However, if I know that I have, um, I kind of want to draw this one bigger so that it's easier for you guys to see. The, um, all the different, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here so we go. there's a lot of different ways to prove congruency, which is something different. Congruency is when triangles are exactly the same. And those are things like side, 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 uh, angle, side, angle, things like that that you probably learned in geometry class. This is a step back. Mm -hmm. With similar triangles, all that's the same. Step back. Whoa, step forward. Oh, okay. Yeah, similar triangles, they're not going to be exactly the same. If they're congruent, that is just a fancy way of them saying they're exactly the same. So they're the same size because their angles or their legs would all be the same size. Their angles are all the same. And so you can pretty much just say they're the exact same. That's what they mean by congruent. All right, we're done with congruent triangles. Now, similar triangles. So we know one is obviously bigger than the other here, but let's say this is A degrees, B degrees, and C degrees. If I were to tell you that this is also A degrees, B degrees, and C degrees, I could then tell you that these are similar triangles. Okay, so side, side, side. There's, anyway, there's always the joke in geometry class, shout out again, like always to Mr. Live and Good, where there are certain, um, this is for you guys more than for them, but there are side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, side, things like that. And if you were to be liberal with how you wrote them, mm. you could make some funny words, and he was not always a fan of that. Oh, man. He would dock points on the tests if you were to do that. Um, but this is side, side, or sorry, not side, side, side. This is angle, 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 right? Pretty much all there is for similar triangles. Yeah. Um, because I have these three, I know something. I know they're similar, but again, let's get into what that means. That means that they are proportional to one another. All right? If you don't know what that means, ask. I'm going to kind of go into it. Um, but I'm going to use some actual values to make it a little clearer. Great. Also, if you have any questions at any point, go ahead and ask those. I think we answered, Robot Dancer doesn't have any questions for today. Um, but if you have any questions, you'll be added to the queue. Uh, first come, first serve. You can also ask questions on our Discord, which is linked in the descriptions. So they're proportional. Let's go ahead and give some values here. Um, let's go three, nine, and five. Okay. If I have these values, I can tell you what x is. All right? I know that the ratio or the proportion from 3 to 9, right? 
is a one to three, or I'm multiplying it by three, which means that from five to x, I also have to multiply by three. A couple different ways to write that, but I would say that three over five is equal to nine over x. You could also say three over nine equals five over x. Uh, you can really do it a number of ways. What we get though, I'm gonna just stick with the first way I did it. Again, I'm going to have to multiply by three, so I'm going to multiply by three. X is going to give me 15. If that's a little quick, let me know. I can kind of break that down. Um, this is, these are similar triangles. This is the very, very basic concept. And then we have a couple of problems to go over um, and they can get quite tricky. All right, there's a lot of things you have to be aware of to be able to prove that they're similar triangles. Okay, um, Brady, do you mind going ahead and pulling that up? It should be on the right spot. Oh. It's gonna be the bottom one. Okay, wait. Yeah, thank you. All right, I'll clean this off real quick. Again, any questions, let me know. At this point, it's not too difficult of a concept. Um, it's about to be. So if you have any questions on this, please say so now or you are going to be lost on, this next, on these next couple of questions. At least on the second or last question I have. It gets a little bit rough. All right. <clears throat> also, for those of you who are new, we do this five nights a week, uh, Sunday to Thursday, completely free. Uh, I mean, it's YouTube Live, Twitch, and Facebook Live. It's not like we could charge for it. Um, feel free to check out our calendar, which is also in the description, to see what topics we'll be covering in the upcoming days or weeks. Uh, you can then come uh, prepared and knowing what we're going to talk about, have some questions prepared. Um, also, the questions don't have to be directly related to what we're talking about on any given day. Uh, just that for the first 30 to 45 minutes while we're I guess lecturing while we're going over a specific topic. Um, we prefer the questions to be related, and if they're not, we'll just put them in the queue and answer them after. All right, Brady or Levi, do you mind making that full screen for me? So How you doing, my lord? Thanks. We're going over question 27 right here. Uh, for anyone watching, let me just circle that real quick. Okay. In the right triangle, ACE below, BD right here is parallel to AE. And BD is perpendicular to EC at point D. The length of AC is 20. They give us that. It's 20 feet. And the length of BD, uh, where are we at? Right here is 3. The length of CD is 4. All right. So pretty much everything they've said in the description, they've just labeled on the triangle. But now what they're asking is they want us to find the length of AE. How do we do that? Well, you should probably have an idea because you already know we're talking about similar triangles. So that might make this a little simpler. What we're going to do though, is try to prove that they're similar to start with, okay? I have two triangles and I know that right here, I'm gonna circle this, the angle right there is the same angle for both triangles, right? Because I have this big triangle and I have the little triangle. So those angles are actually the same. That's a shared angle, so I know those are the same. I now want to find out if B and A and E and D, those angles at those intersections, are the same. Well, I have that E is a right triangle, or this triangle is a right triangle with the degree of A, E, D being 90 and B, D, C being 90. So I know those are the same. If I have two angles that are the same, I can prove that the third one has to be because you have to have 180 degrees. So if I have the first two being the same, that third one has to make it equal 180. So that has to be the same between the two triangles. Another way we know that is because, let's say, it says it up there, BD is parallel to AE. So the, the angle uh, from CBD to CAE, we know also because of that, they have to be the same. All right, so now I know that they are similar. Now what do I do? I'm gonna erase this so I can, eh, I'll just write above it. Now that I know they're similar, I have to find how I can make this proportional, right? What proportion can I set up, all right? I know that AE I'm gonna have is going to be proportionate to or proportional to three. So let's say three 
over AE is going to be equal to something else. So we're going to have our small on the top and our large value on the bottom. That's fine. You could flip them both if you wanted. does not matter. Uh, the only length I actually know for this large triangle is AC. So that's 20. Now I have to figure out the length of the side of the triangle similar to uh, 20. So I said AE and BD are proportionate, proportional. I know that EC and DC are going to be proportional, but I don't know the length of EC. And I know that AC and BC are going to be proportional, proportional to one another. I don't know why I cannot say that right now. You got it. They share a proportion. All right. I don't know the length of BC. However, I do know that it is a three, four, five triangle. It's a perfect right triangle, a Pythagorean triplet. Yeah. Is that what I'm looking at? Thanks. So that's going to be five. Plug that in here. I can plug this through. I can also simplify it. I know that five over 20 is one over four. Let's see if I can write that here. Three over AE, good, equals one over four. Multiply through and I get that AE equals 12. Boom. Are there any questions on that? If not, I have a more difficult problem uh, I'd like us to go through. I think we did it last week, but I like it a lot. Um, and I'm pulling it from memory, so hopefully it works out. Turn this off? Pretty confident it will. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Thanks, Brad. All right, don't seem to be any questions on this. That's great. We will have some trouble there, Brady. Got it. All right, uh, we'll continue this next problem. Uh, I might be able to... Man, if I was left-handed, this would be great. <laughs> no way. Hey, guys. They were, uh, well, Anjali ended up TAing after me, but I TAed them for the digital system design course. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. I know you guys were really asking for this. Um, I know you needed it, so this is actually for you two specifically. Also, didn't you, did you guys already graduate? Oh, man, I'm old. Okay, the next problem... <laughs> you just look old. Uh, yeah, it's the, it's the camera. It adds 20 yeah. years and 60 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. That's why. You must have eaten two cameras. <laughs> that was good. That was very that good. That was very good, it's, it's not me. Don't worry. It's you, dude. Man, Steve where... Steve Carell said that. That was good. Steve Carell said yeah. that? Okay, all right. No, Michael no. Scott? Steve no. Carell is Michael Scott or just... Between two ferns? Oh. Yes. Yeah. That was... A, anyway, yeah. Okay, we're given this triangle, the set of triangles. What they tell us, we know that this is six, AB is six, and AE, even though it doesn't look like it, is 12. Uh, BC is five, and CD is four. We know, and this is from a problem I'm pulling out from the ACT, or the SAT a while back, so I know this. They say it in the description that BE is parallel to CF, which is also parallel to DG. From here, there's a number of things we can do. Something we did in the last problem. Uh, you know, I'm gonna try a different color here to make it clear what was given and what we have deduced, if you will. Uh, we know that this angle right here is similar for all three, because if I take this out, I have ABE being its own triangle, ACF and ADG are all their own triangle, but every single one of them has this angle up here in it. Now, because these lines are all parallel, all right, I can also prove that this angle, this angle and this angle are all the same, meaning this angle also has to be the same. It's really quite nifty. At this point, I now know that I have three similar triangles, all right? And if I haven't already said this, what we're trying to find is AG, okay? The length of AG. 
at this point, I have a proportion, right? I have 6 to 12 equals, 6 is our smaller one, so we're going to, we're, we know that AD over AG, uh, AD is going to be smaller, so AD is going to be on top, and I know we already know what that value is, I just want to have it written there uh, to have an extra step in there to make it clear what we're doing. I'm going to simplify this to 1 half. That's going to equal AD, which is 6, plus 5, plus 4, which is going to be 15, over AG. At this point, it's a 1 to 2 ratio, meaning AG is going to be 30. Uh, the trick here, which you need to be comfortable with, is having, when you see triangles that are stacked, um, I try to think about, or the first thing I think about really is that it's probably going to deal with similar triangles. Um, if they're stacked, especially if there is a parallel line that is shared, I know that for a fact. Um, but when they're stacked, you at least have one of the angles being the same, if not all of them. Great. That is, that is what I have for similar triangles today. Very good, Brandon. You good and ready, Brady? I'm good and ready. All right. Mm. <sighs> Poppy Anima. Hey, thanks, Brandon. You know those people, don't you? I, I Yeah, I already said, yeah, I, I TA'd them. just want to make and sure that and Jolly ended up we're acting towards Anjali, people that you Anjali, knew. I always see it. Anjali ended up TA. Okay, guys, we're going She's over. She's probably here for me to say her name wrong, and That's then good. not here to hear me say it correctly. Anjali, is that the name? Yeah. Very good. I always wanted to put the emphasis on the wrong part of her name. All right. You'll learn someday. I know. I know. I'm trying. We're talking about ACT science outside knowledge. That's outside knowledge found on the ACT science section. Most of the questions on ACT science can be found by looking somewhere in the passage, somewhere in the data. The questions are geared in a way that you can use key terms in the questions to look towards certain figures, graphs, tables, charts, and find the answer that way. It's not a test of your previous science knowledge for the most part, but for the least part, there is a little bit of science that you should be comfortable with because it does come up. And if you don't know these basic things, some of these questions, Matt Zaith, yes. Well done. I don't know why. I, I shouldn't have reserved that for you. That's when we get a subscriber. If you want to subscribe, I'll give you a good well done. But you're on Facebook, so I don't think you can do that on Facebook. You have to be on Twitch. It's okay. I'm glad you're watching, though. That's that's fantastic. Those are very it's very large. Um, read your article, by the way. Very, very nice. Uh, so we're going to talk about ACT science outside knowledge. See, isn't it fun? You can interact with your audience. It's just fun. Okay. Outside knowledge piece number one. You need to know, that's a little diagonal. You need to know about the pH system. The pH system tells you how acidic or basic something is. What do those mean? Something about dissolving in water and making hydrogen or hydroxide ions, that doesn't matter. Understanding what numbers correspond to what, uh, which side of the uh, acid-base spectrum you're on is the important thing, okay? So the pH scale goes from zero to 14. Okay, so halfway in the middle, you are at seven. And seven, I'm gonna write in blue because it's neutral, it's not an acid or a base, and everyone's favorite chemical, water, is neutral. So neutral, neither an acid nor a base. Um, you ever been described as just like a big bag of water? You know, people say like, you know, you're 70% water, so you're basically a bag of water. I always yes. felt strange when people yes. called me that. I get it, but I don't, oh, you're just a bag of water. I don't feel like a bag of water. Like okay. A plastic bag? It probably is a plastic bag. The wind? Yeah. Wanting to start again? Wanting to start again. Alright. Other sides. Zero to seven. Acids. Seven to fourteen. Bases. Here's how I remember this. A comes before B in the alphabet. A is the earlier stuff. The earlier numbers are A, acid. The later numbers are B, base. Okay? The closer you are to zero, the more acidic you are. The closer you are to 14, the more basic you are. So you can be, you know, you can have two bases. You know, one at, I don't know, eight, and one at, we're going to say, 10. 
These are both bases. 10 is more basic, 8 is more acidic. They're both bases, but 8 is closer to that side, so it's more acidic. pH scale, down, great. Next thing we should be talking about is the temperature scale. In science, we use Celsius or centigrade for the temperature scale uh, because it makes way more sense than Fahrenheit. Just a little bit of background. Fahrenheit, freezing point of water is 32, boiling point is 212. Some of the most random numbers in the world. In the Celsius scale, we go from, or the important numbers, because you can be below zero, but the important numbers are zero degrees is freezing point of water, and 100 degrees is boiling point of water. So what that means as far as states of matter goes, go, states go, it's plural. If you are somewhere between zero and 100, you are liquid. If you are below zero, you are a solid because you're ice. And if you're above 100, you're a gas because you're water vapor. That only applies to water, okay? But those are the important temperatures you need to know. You don't need to know the temperature, uh, freezing point, boiling point of other weird chemicals. Water is the most important one. We use it all the time. It comes up in science, things like that. That's why those numbers are important. Okay, more things we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about independent and dependent variables. So I'm gonna erase this. No, you're not. <laughs> You just watch me, Brendan. Uh, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm erasing it. Mm -hmm. You don't believe me? Smell our cars. Smell our cars. We're real men. <laughs> we like sports. We like sports and we don't care. You know. If you say that we're nothing, we'll see you in court. Oh, we like sports. It's been oh, years. That's uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway. we'll stop there. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. Let's talk about variables. Variables, not in the math sense, but more in the experimental design sense. When you're doing an experiment, you are trying to figure out if there's some kind of a relationship between one variable and another variable. Um, so, two different kinds of variables. We have independent and dependent variables. So we're going to come up with a very simple science experiment to show you the difference between them. Let's imagine that, okay, like a classic high school science fair, junior high, junior high science fair project is like, what happens when you put different amounts of water in plants? And so you have, you choose a plant, you bunch of sunflowers, and you have a bunch of different vases or vases, whatever you say. Right. And you, then I heard people say vase. Oh, and you vary the amount of water in each of them, okay? Because you want to see what the effect is of having more water or less water on these flowers, on specifically the growth of these flowers. So you've got some water in this one, you got more water in this one, you got a lot of water in that one. Whoa, okay? The thing that you're in control of that you are changing is the independent variable. So in this case, it's going to be amount of water. It's weird because it's independent, so you think, oh, it doesn't, doesn't change. It does change. It's just, you'll see. It'll make more sense in context of the dependent variable. Okay. So the thing that the scientists are changing is the independent variable. Okay. So scientists change this. That's the important thing. Scient scientists change. The thing that changes in response that you measure is the dependent variable. So in this experiment, I never actually drew flowers. Let me draw some little fun flowers for the kids. So we've got, here we go, there's a flower for you. And then there's a flower for you. And then there's a flower for you. Ooh, science experiment. Flora. Look what happened. Which amount of water was the best? It was the medium amount. As the flower went up super high. So what they're probably measuring is the height of the plant. That is the way that they're quantifying the growth of the plant. Okay? So the dependent is... Okay. Scientists measure. So they're changing the independent. They're measuring the dependent. And usually when they graph it, they're going to put the independent on the x-axis and the dependent on the y-axis. So this one, we'd have amount of water on the x-axis. We might have, uh, we got low, 
we got medium and we've got high, and then we've got growth on our y-axis, um, which would be measured in probably inches or probably centimeters if we're going to be scientific about it. Uh, and just a very simple, we've got, there's the amount of growth for low, there's the amount of growth for medium, and then there's the amount of growth for high amount of water. Okay. So dependent on the y, independent goes on the x-axis. Other things you need to know. When you change a variable, you want to keep every other thing the same. Because if there's multiple things changing, if these flowers are in different amounts of light and different amounts, you know, different kinds of dirt, then there's going to be a bunch of different variables that are, is going to affect um, how high these flowers are going to grow. So you want to try to control every possible thing except for the thing that you're changing, which is the independent variable. Okay. So the last thing to know about experimental design is what is called a control group. I will write this down here. So a control group is the group that you keep exactly the same as what you'd find under normal conditions. So it might be that your region usually sees six inches of rainfall in the wet season, okay? Which means that normally plants get that amount. You want to have a group that you don't change anything to. So that, that just gets the standard amount of water. And then your experimental groups are the ones that you change from the normal to whatever it is that you're trying to figure out uh, with you know, more or less water. So like for a drug trial, to figure out if some drug works for headaches, you would not want to give the drug to some people to see what happens under normal conditions. And that's the purpose of a placebo group. You give some people a placebo, it's not actually the drug, it's just a sugar pill, just to see if symptoms improve without even having the drug. That's the control group right there. Okay. So there's a difference here between when I said you want to control everything and having a control group. Controlling everything means all the other variables. You don't want them to change. You just want one thing to change, but the one group that you don't even make that change to that you keep under normal conditions is called the control group. So in this case, we're going to call this normal, we're going to say unchanged conditions. Okay. This will make some of your science passages make a little more sense. You'll be able to tell, oh, I get it. They're changing this thing, and then this is the thing they're measuring. The independent variable is often nice round numbers. If they're doing voltages, you might have 10 volts, 20 volts, 30 volts, 40 volts. And then the thing that they're measuring, which might be the current, is going to be a bunch of crazy numbers. 11.2, 12.7, 13.3. Uh, That's another indicator. Scientists want to choose nice numbers for themselves, but the things they measure they can't control, so those are the ones that are going to look kind of wonky. Okay. Um, okay, we're going to get rid of this now. Get rid of this. You guys seen any good movies lately? Um, yes. What did you see, Levi? I saw with you. What did you see with me? Well, it's... Is it a movie called With You, or you saw it with me? I saw it with you. What did you see? With you. You saw with me... No, you saw with you with me. Yes. Great. That's... That's useless. With whom did you see it? With whom did I see it? Um, I saw with you, uh, with him. Ah. Yeah. I guess it would just be I saw with you squared. But if you're going to square it, are we adding with and you, or are they addition. multiplying it? It's addition. It's addition. So in that case, I saw with squared plus two with you plus you squared. I didn't want you to do that, but I thought she might. Uh, of course I'm going to do that. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Whenever there's any... Fun foil patterns. I'm going to jump into those. That was called the sum of something. Uh-huh. Yeah, why not? Why not? All right. We got a couple other things we should talk about. We talked about pH. We talked about temperature. Fantastic. Metric prefixes. That's important. That's important. They have to, you have to know those things. Um, in the metric system, there's a bunch of prefixes that tell you how large or small a unit is. So we'll start with the meter. The meter is the standard measure of length. But then if you want to measure very large distances, like between planets, it's not very fun to use meters because there's going to be a ton of them. So there's a unit called the kilometer. Actually, you probably want to use units even larger than that. They use astronomical units, which is a different thing altogether. Kilo is a metric prefix. This means times 1,000. So a kilometer is 1,000 times as large as a meter. And then on the other side of things, if you want to go down by a thousand to go to one thousandth of a meter, you have a millimeter. 
So your metric prefix is milli, which means one thousandth. Oh, milli, oh, milli, oh, milli. Exactly. Yeah. One, one thousandth. Lots of small numbers. Okay. So if you want to convert, there's a bunch of ones in the middle. You've got centimeter. Yeah, oh, centi is important. Yes, we're gonna talk about centi, but then there's like deci. You don't need to know that. So um, a centimeter. I'm just gonna use centi. Think about where you've seen cent before. Centipede, a cent of a dollar. It's one one hundredth. So there's deci, which you never really see. Don't worry about that. Meter, you got uh, you got decameters, not really important. Hectometers, not really important. Then you get to kilometers, and those are really the important prefixes that you have to know. Okay. So if you've got, let's see, 0 0.03 meters, and you want to convert this into centimeters, because this is much less than a meter, so it'd be fun to have units that are a little bit bigger then you need to convert using a conversion factor that says 100 centimeters are equal to one meter. So I would put one meter on the bottom and 100 centimeters on the top. This right here is equal to one because these are both the same length. So this is like when we're simplifying fractions or changing the denominator, we multiply the top and bottom by the same thing. Um, this is still equal to one, but the meters cancel out leaving you with centimeters as your unit. So you just have to multiply here and you're going to get three centimeters. Okay, if you wanted to turn meters into kilometers, you have to divide by a thousand instead. Okay, so if you're going in this direction, you're multiplying, if you're going in this direction, you are dividing. Okay, metric prefixes, dunzo, garbanzo, beans. Good. Starting to get you to say that, Brendan. If anybody has any questions, please chime in. This is for you. This is not for us. It seems like it's for us. It's not. It's for you. <laughs> it's kind of for us, but it's it's more for you than it, it is for us. Um, I'm gonna do this thing that Brendan does where he dries it. Careful with the roof, bud. Nah, the roof's on fire. The roof. The roof. Hey. It's on fire. Yes. Someone so should put the about, roof out because right? it's on fire. The fire department, the fire department, the fire department is coming. I hope they bring the hose and they connect it to the hydrant. That's how the song should keep going. That's, That's an example of how our tax dollars are used for good things for the community. Chemical equations. Yeah, you know what? Okay, quick solutions, chemical equations, and we're going to call it Dunzo for outside knowledge because this is a lot of stuff. When you have a solution, that's something dissolved in something else. Usually the thing that it's dissolved in is water. Okay, that's called an aqueous solution. Uh, simplest solution I can think of that they always use as an example is when you pour salt into water and then stir it so it dissolves. So we're gonna have water and then we're gonna throw some salt in there. And these are gonna be going downward. Whoa, salt. Okay, the thing that is being dissolved, it's going to disappear, it's still there, but it's, being dis it's disappearing, is called the solute. The thing that is doing the dissolving of the other substance is called the solvent. The way that I remember this is I think about salt water, because that's the most basic solution that they bring up in science class. Salt, solute are very, very close. They both have this L and this T business almost next to each other. So I just think of, oh, salt is the solute, and then the other one is solvent, so that must be the, the liquid itself. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a liquid, though. There could be gas solutions, things like that, uh, which are fun. Okay, last thing we're going to talk about is chemical equations. Every now and then you have to balance them. Chemical equations show you when a chemical change happens. And on one side, you have the chemicals you start with. On the other side, you have the chemicals that you end with. So I'm going to give you one that's super important to know, which is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants use light and carbon dioxide and water to create food for themselves, sugar, also known as glucose. So the inputs or the products, CO2, H2O, then you see this little arrow here, which represents the reaction taking place. Um, and 
it requires light, so you'll see light on this arrow, but that's they'll never really ask you about that part of the equation. It'll be more about the coefficients. What you get out of this is glucose, C6H12O6, and oxygen. Okay? So these subscripts represent how many of these atoms we have. So CO2 is one carbon atom, two oxygen atoms. H2O is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Uh, you can see how that continues. So with balancing chemical equations, what you're trying to do is figure out the coefficients, the numbers in front of these molecules, which make sure that you have the same number of atoms of each type on both sides. So we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen on both sides. And let's just quickly count up how many we have of each right now. So we have one carbon atom. We have two hydrogen atoms, and we have three oxygen atoms. Cho. Cho Chang, Harry Potter. Just some loose association for you. Um, on this side, we have six carbon atoms. We have 12 hydrogen atoms, and we have eight oxygen atoms. So clearly, this can happen because there's not enough carbon to turn into this amount of carbon. So let's start with the carbons. How do we make this equal to that? We can't take, we can't make six into a one because this molecule requires six carbon atoms. So let's take carbon dioxide and let's put a six in front of it. So now we see that we require six carbon dioxide atoms for this reaction, or molecules for this reaction to take place. Let's recalibrate. We now have six carbon atoms and we have, this is applied to the O2 as well. So we now have 12 oxygens from this molecule plus this, which is going to be 13. Okay, so our carbons are now balanced. So we give a little check next to that. It might change later, but right now they are balanced. Next thing we should talk about is hydrogen. We have 12 hydrogens, and over here we only have 2. So we need to turn 2 into 12, and we do that by multiplying by another 6. 6 here. That's going to make our hydrogen count into 12, but it's also going to change our oxygen count. Now we're going to have 12 plus 6, which is 18. So this number is going to now be 18. Let's go over here. Our hydrogens now are checked. They match up. Last thing to check is oxygens. 18 over here. We got a ton of oxygen, only 8 here. I can put a coefficient in front of this molecule or this molecule, but if I do it in front of this molecule, our carbon and hydrogen are going to change, and then we're going to have to go back and recalibrate. It's going to be a mess. This is way more controlled. Let's just alter the number of oxygen molecules we have here. We have eight. We want to have 10 more. So I need to put, if I already have six here, I want a total of 12 coming from this one. So I just need to put a six here. So now I have six oxygen plus 12 oxygen is 18. Now our system, now our chemical equation is balanced on both sides. So you need six carbon dioxide molecules plus six water molecules combined in the presence of light to make one. We don't need to put a coefficient there because it's just one. One glucose molecule and six oxygen molecules. Balancing chemical equations. It's what's for breakfast. Nice. <laughs> Thanks, man. We're sponsored by breakfast as a concept, so that's why we have to say that. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay. Um, what time is it? What do we want to talk about now? Any questions, guys? Not right now. We have plenty of time. We are here for you. You gotta let it dry before you just go doing that. I know, but that's what, I like when both of the towels get all wet, because then I can't keep using them. Exactly, you're just ruining it. Oh, I get it now. It's okay. Ruined. See, we have a fundamental difference, Brennan, because you want things to work very well and quickly, and I want things to break down and be inefficient and be a waste. And I think those are just temperamental differences. Uh, I can see I just now. want to disagree. I know you do. Anything you say, I just want to disagree. I know, and I, I've seen my face. I, I don't blame you. Sometimes Levi just can't handle, I don't know. I can just make a face at him, and then he just like loses it. I do lose it sometimes. You do lose yeah, it sometimes. sometimes. All right, here we go. Hope that knowledge was outside enough for you guys. Well, we're indoors, so. Well, that's why you gotta watch this outside, even though there's a polar vortex going through the Midwest. Stay inside, stay alive. Are there any questions in the chat? Let them know. 
If not, I can get up and spiel for a minute. Cause yeah. Why don't you give up the old spiel? Okay. All right. Um, for anyone who is new to the stream, we do this five nights a week, Sunday to Thursday, um, 8 to 9.30 Eastern. We are doing this to help. Okay, I'm good. Thanks. Um, do we answer the... any questions about the SAT and ACT. We also, um, if you're just tuning in now, you've probably missed the first part of the stream where we go and cover specific topics. Uh, now it's open to anything. Any questions you have, it uh, doesn't matter what it is as long as it's at least tangentially related to the SAT, ACT, or college, um, college prep. It could be questions on college application essays, although pretty much you're done with those now or you're a junior and you don't need to worry about it for quite a while. Um, but we can still answer that. We can go over any of those topics. We have a YouTube channel. We have Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we're streaming on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, I don't know if I said we have a YouTube, but hey, there you go, we do. Um, so if we're answering questions you can't see, it's because they're either asking from those different channels or they're using our Discord, which you can find in our description. Uh, that's where we have a big community of students who are constantly asking questions, getting questions answered, um, and lots of times that's where we're getting our questions for our queue. If you're watching and you have any questions, uh, please let us know. Levi, I didn't grab any of my markers. Can you throw me one? Oh my gosh. I know. It was silly of me. They're the same. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I can just start going off and doing any topic I want, uh, but that's not necessarily helpful for you. So if you're watching you have any questions specifically, let us know. Otherwise, my favorite thing to cover is circles. Uh, we already did triangles, and I can just keep, keep the shapes theme rolling. Keep it rolling, dude. Did you get the... It's a circle? Did, yeah. Okay, thanks. It's like a wheel, guys. It rolls. It's... You know time? <sighs> well, it keeps on turning. Polar, okay. Polar vortex? All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Have you even started reading that book? I'm still upset with you, Brady. Yeah. I have I started reading it. Mm, I'm on it's page not a great 25. circle. Um, They're getting ready for bell time. Yeah, you said that a week ago. You haven't still read. Getting ready. You haven't been reading the book. It's fine. Just say you haven't been reading the book I recommended and gave you. Well, I think it's when fine. you read the book, they had far less preparations to make for Bell Time. <laughs> far fewer. Anyway. <laughs> Why can't I get that? Because you're anyway. bad at it. Uh, so, if there are any questions, let me know. If not, I can start going into. Um, I should probably write this up so you guys know what I'm about to talk about. So, we're going to talk about arc length. Keep it down, all right? Sorry, Dad. Uh, and sector area. Sector area. Robots in disguise. Yeah, because I've been practicing that new weird technique of trying to sing whatever, Brady, yeah. my voice is like slowly getting lower, I think because my voice is slowly starting to get used to doing it. Well, I think it's just correlated with your traps getting larger. I hate you <laughs> so much. We're not talking about that right now. Well, I'm just like, I wish I had a long sleeve shirt on. Uh, I feel trapped, yeah. <laughs> Just wait till you guys wake up with a mousetrap in your bed or something. Like the board game? No, <laughs> not at all. All right, let's say we have a central angle X, right? It's X degrees. Uh, we have points A and B, they're on the circle. And I'm trying to find the length of the measure of, uh, not measure. I want to find uh, AB. So at this point, they will normally tell you the stop. If you're drawing, I hate you. Okay, please pay no attention to the man behind the mirror. <laughs> it's his traps. <laughs> okay. Like, the trap is We're always everybody. <laughs> the, the two bases are parallel to each other. The trapezoids. <laughs> are you done? Are I'm you done? Finished. Can I continue with this? Yeah, I'm just going to put a uh, caption on it. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. For those of you who are watching and tuning in, I apologize for them. Um, we're going over arc length and sector area right now. Um, if you're just tuning in, we already finished going over. <sighs> okay. Uh, we already finished similar triangles and outside knowledge. If you have any questions, we can go and talk about that. I. Okay. We're just going to jump into awesome. this. So they will say. Uh, you're looking for the length of the minor arc? I'm looking for the Zoid Lord of the Traps, and I was told he was around here. Whoa! You must be him. I what is what, the Zoe like trapezoid? That's just I don't. 
I want to call you the Lord of the Traps, but then I want to put Zoid in there as well. Cause like Trapezoid. Zoidberg? No, because Trapezoid. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, Futurama. All right, the Minor Arc. And for whatever reason, I didn't capitalize it. Okay. Uh, for Minor Arc, that means we want the shorter distance. All right? It's going to be the Minor of the two. If I was to go the other way around, it'd be the major arc. Almost always they're going to say the minor arc. That's what they mean. Uh, the way to solve this, um, currently I can't. We need a little bit more information. Uh, one way I could do that, um, hmm, if I'm trying to find the arc, I need to have a degree. So let's go ahead and change this to something else. Um, like 60 degrees. Good enough. Now, hold on. I'm ready to check my calculator. If we have 60 degrees and we're trying to find the minor arc, the other thing we need to know, at least the minimum thing we need to know, is the radius. So let's say that r equals 5. Doesn't matter what units. To solve for um, the minor arc, there's going to be a proportion. If I were to use just a regular circle here, that's a much better circle, um, like a pie chart. If this, if I have it cut like this, most of you know, looking at it, especially because I have the right tri or the right angle drawn there, that this is going to be cut into fourths. So each one of these is going to be equal to each other. What we know also is that each one of these is going to be 90 degrees, and if it's out of the total 360 degrees that's actually going to be equal to one over four. So the area there is proportional to the, the angle of any given sector area to the area of the entire circle. It goes the same way with the length of the minor arc. Now, to solve that, I'm going to have 60 degrees over my 360 degrees, right, equals my part a, B, my part of this distance over the whole distance. Well, the whole distance is going to be my circumference. And that's why I said I needed to know R. Now that I know what R is, I can solve for the circumference. So the circumference is going to equal 2 pi R. I'll just go ahead and write that out, which is going to equal 10 pi. At this point, I know that this is going to simplify to 1 over 6. That's going to equal A, B over 10 pi, meaning my length of AB is going to equal, oh nasty, you didn't clear the calculator, man, that was just to tons of math that I didn't want to see, oh, um, hate that. 10 pi over 6 or 5 pi over 3, I don't want to actually plug in pi, it's just going to give me a nasty number, plug it in, plug it in, no one is around you. You didn't, you didn't, you're not going to finish it for me there, Brady? What, say to you, I love you? I don't know. Maybe. We, we need to re rewrite the lyrics for that part as well. We do. Great. Now, I already touched on this, but for the area... Dang it. Can I have another marker, guys? What do you want? The orange one right there? Thanks. At this point, we now know how to find the minor arc. All right? Done. Done. If I want to find the area, right, the sector area... I told you it's the same thing we do here. I still have the 60 degrees over 360, but now it's going to be the area right, of the sector over the area of the circle. The area of the circle is going to be pi r squared, or because r is 5, it's going to be 25 pi. We plug that in, we get 1 over 6, because I'm going to simplify these, equals uh, the area of the sector over 25 pi. Or the area of the sector equals 25 pi over 6. Great. Uh, also, do, can one of you guys erase this while I erase oh this stuff? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, it's, Actually, why don't do I erase, erase all of it do this over here? While I'm, are you still no, working you on the that. same problem? No, I'm okay, done. Okay, here, read this and I'll erase. Oh, okay. Hey, thanks. Uh, your right hand is the wet rag. You're going to love it, Brendan. Oh. Good evening, everybody. I've, I'm sure I've taught you a great deal this evening, seeing as I, I talked about nothing aside from this. You love 
Okay. Say it, Brandon. What do you want me to say? Just what what that. Bird just said. That you love us? Yeah, I hate you. No, that you love us. Oh, guys, there is a new oh, name. Oh, Victor, thanks for sharing the video. I appreciate it. What? Don't know if he's There is a new it. name that is on the level of Gustav Orkin Fallopian. Uh, what? And it's the name Sven Pushkomstashov. <laughs> is that on there? No, it's a name that uh, I've. It, um, my aunt thought, like when people said when push comes to shove, yeah, she that thought was that was a Russian name. man. Wow. Oh yeah. my God. Sven push comes to shove. Sven push comes to shove. Yes. That's. It's actually awesome. Quite funny. Yeah, it is. So I'm I'm making email accounts for Sven push comes to shove and Gustav Orkin Fallopian. Um, and then I'm gonna have them talk to each other. That's good. They're going to really like each other. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, they're going to really get along. Does anybody have anything to add to that? I assume not. Like us? I added that last sentence. Oh. Uh, I don't... Oh, I, I was not referencing the thing you guys were reading. Yeah, yeah but... absolutely. Okay. That way they were serious. Okay, so if you're watching now and you have questions, please ask them. If you're watching now and you don't have questions, um, please stop watching. Well, no. No, yes. But just you, you gotta find stop. questions. Hold no, on. I gotta stop. Big time. Uh, I changed that a little bit. And it's not the part you think I'm gonna change. So, <laughs> there you go. Also, okay. Victor, thanks for the thanks for sharing the video. We appreciate that. Is it, um, are you fine with is this? me posting whatever it is? If I can, if I like it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still disagree with that last statement, but I'm, I'm not you gonna stop you guys. You don't disagree with it. You just don't want us to say it. Okay, no, that's fair. That is fair. I just... Yeah. Don't want you to say it. That's fine, though. Um, great. If there are any questions, let us know. Otherwise, I can just continue doing math. I can do verbal things, too. I can do science, reading, strategies for both. Well, so, what do you wanna, oh, I don't uh, know if, if you saw it. Just a second. Every, just uh, hold on. Okay. Um, there's an image, too. Do you care? I don't know uh, if that comes with it or not. I don't know. I don't know if it will. I'm, I'm very excited. excited. It's only one or the other. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Yeah. I have Go an announcement. It. I have a child now. You're pregnant? You're tutoring? Yes, I'm going. Got it. Okay, see you, Brady. Goodbye. The bye chat bye. says bye. They don't, but don't tell him. <laughs> oh, he can still hear me. I heard you. Oh, that's a bummer. Um, nice. Yeah, we can talk about strategies for the SAT, ACT, the timing, why the reading sucks, why you might want to try the SAT over the ACT. We can talk about our free website where you can go and take a practice test and see how well you've done or how poorly, but I guess let's be optimistic how well you've done. Uh, and it'll spit out very very aggressively a score report telling you what topics you missed what questions you missed what the answers were and your most common or top three topics that you were not comfortable with for each section um, that's free that is not always going to be free this is always going to be free the website's not always going to be free we need people to test it out so, well, if I could spell, that'd be phenomenal. Um, so if you want to help us out with that, get some free, um, pretty expensive. Well, it's, this isn't going to be that expensive. Long term, we're going to try to make some money off of this website. But for now, it's free. So think of it that way. You can do it now so you don't have to pay later. Or just make an account now so you don't have to pay later. Like, whatever. Um, Nerdish.com, free diagnostic. It's gonna take some time or if you've already taken these tests and Khan Academy hey hey I'll tip some how you doing um, also I don't know if Brady got to tell you about this but here you go you're gonna be hearing this from me anyway uh, that's yeah, yeah. Um, here's our website it's a free diagnostic you can go and take the SAT and or the ACT if you have that much time and want to take both or see which one you're more geared towards um, you can take those, uh, really easy to do. It's got an answer key next to the test. You can scroll them both. It's pretty pretty straightforward. You hit submit on the form, you hit done. It'll take probably 20 to 30 seconds unless your computer's really, really fast. Thank you for the follow, Alt Ipsum. It'll spit you out your score report and you can then come back on stream and say, hey, what do you mean I don't know how to do word problems? And I'll say, well, Go ahead and give us the problems you missed and we can go over them on stream uh, and most likely we can pull them up on the overlay. Also, we have a practice test 
uh, in all of our links. If you guys want to pull that up, go through, find problems you're not comfortable with, we can go over that. Um, if you, you need a confirmation code, so if you are on Twitch, you guessed it, you use Twitch. If you're on Facebook, it's Facebook. Hey, if anybody is here because they saw the Reddit post that I just made, that's Brendan. Those are Brendan's traps. You're the worst. Look at them. And you can leave. Look at them. Give me my and then also, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He has to cover them because some people get upset. It's not what the stream is for. Um, <laughs> yes, the stream is for asking questions. You should ask questions. Not about, about personal Brendan's life. personal life. Or... Or, your words, your ideally, words. about the test. <laughs> ideally, about the test. You can ask about the free diagnostic. Yes. Yeah. If this doesn't make sense, that's fine. Ask. I will tell you more. Um, yes. Like, math questions. We'll do math questions. Or... Yeah, we can do math, verbal. Verbal means English or reading. We can tell you strategies for that, how best to approach them, what you yeah. should do the week before the test, the night before the test. Ideally, sleep yeah. a lot. We, we can talk about college stuff, too, because I went to college... Um, I like how you said dead. it in such a way that it made it seem like I didn't. You're like, I went to college. I like how you said that in such a way that it means that it makes it seem like you actually did. <laughs> uh, squad goals. Squad yes. goals. Yes. Yes. He, look, he's so swole. That's ridiculous. I'm going to walk back so I look <laughs> smaller and smaller. Uh, also, hey, squad goals. Thanks for tuning in. I don't. Every time someone says something like that, I assume it's one of my friends from high school or college, but I don't know who that is. So I'm yeah. assuming you're just some random stranger who's being very kind. But Thank you. you should ask questions yeah. about the ACT. If you're here to learn about the test, we will tell we're you. We're here to answer any Anything questions. you ask, we will answer. Whoa, hey. We, we could be wrong. Oh, okay. But we will answer your questions. And most of those questions, if they're not related to the SAT or ACT or anything we already know, is going to be a big fat, I don't know. But, and then we'll give you our best assumption. Yeah. Uh, great. Um, <laughs> I have opinions on everything. They might yeah. not be like founded in anything, grounded in anything. Uh, squad goals, do you have any questions? Are you in high school? Are you taking the SAT or ACT? Do you plan to? Are you done? Do you if have not, children how did of you find uh, you know, SAT or ACT taking age? Do you have parents of SAT or ACT testing age? That's it could way. happen. It could. You don't know? I guess. Depending on... Depending on a lot of things. Um, yeah, if you have any questions on the free diagnostic, you can ask. Um, I already went over a couple of practice problems. We can continue yeah, I'm gonna with more. Yeah, I'm going to pull up the math, and I'm going to do a math problem. All right. I'm, so do you I'm want me to math. erase this? Sorry? Yeah. All right. Are you okay with that? Yeah, no. I mean, I just wrote it up here so people could read it, but All whatever. Right. We might lag. You okay there? Huh? All right. I'm just saying we might Great job, guys. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Al Tipson. What do I want to do? Where are we at? I don't know. Well, should I? Oh, go ahead and get this out of the way. Squad goals. Any questions? The point is to comment with questions. You can also comment and pick on us. That's actually kind of funny, as long as it's not me. Um, it's it's, it's quite enjoyable when, when, when it's someone friend. else. Um, which question are we doing? And by we, I'm assuming you're probably wanting to do it, yes. but uh, I can beat you to it. I'm doing, no, you can't. Uh, doing number 32. Oh, okay. that one? Yeah, I haven't even that one. That. Okay, so we have 12 red marbles. I'm going to write all these things up here. So 12 red. Um, also, this might be helpful, but also definitely ask your own questions. You can ask them in the chat or in the Discord down below or do other things, I guess. Um, Yes, so 12 red. A bag contains 12 red marbles. Ooh, I should draw this bag again. Okay. You just, okay. Dude, I have to draw the bag. Sure you do. It's a bag of marbles. Now, 12 red marbles, five yellow. Oh boy, this is already running out. Brendan, can you get me another marker or toss me one? Which one? Blue. Uh, or yeah. not blue? No, nope, no. One right. of the two. Whee. There it is. Five yellow. Then we have 15 green. And I think that's it. Yes, okay. 
And then it says how many additional red marbles. So this is a pretty important question here. Not how many red marbles, but how many additional. Uh, must be added to the 32 marbles total. So we have a total of 32, which makes sense. Yes, yeah, so we have 32 total. And we need to see how many we have to add to the red to get to a three-fifths probability. So this is what we care about here, is three-fifths. Wow, that's just awful. There we go, three-fifths. That looks so bad. Where did you post that, by the way? ACT, SAT? ACT? I hope. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, so three-fifths probability. But we have 32 total. So let's just see uh, right out of the bag, if you will. We have 12 out of 32, which, if we simplify it, is we have a 3 eighths, but we want to get to 3 fifths. So obviously, we need more to get from 3 eighths to 3 fifths. How much? That's going to be an issue, but we want to get to 3 fifths. So let's say 3 fifths equals, and we're starting with, mm, let's say, out of 32. So we're out of 32 marbles, and right now we have 12 red. So if we add x we, to the 12 marbles, so we're adding x red marbles to this bag, we're going to have to add x to the total as well. That's the main logical leap in this problem. You're adding it to red, so you also have to add it to the total, and it will equal 3 fifths. The reason I set it up this way is because now we have an equation, and now you, ha you don't have to have any idea what's going on. We are just solving for x, and it will give us our answer. So this is all the plan. Okay, This is all the, the harder stuff, and once you get to your equation, now it gets easy. Can I have another colored marker? Please. Uh, yeah, here you go. Yes, thank you. Much better, Josh. Yes. So I'm going to multiply, well, I'm going to cross multiply here, might as well. So we'll have 96 plus 3x equals 60 plus 5x. Let's subtract 60 from both sides. We have 3x, ew, what am I saying? 36 plus 3x equals 5x. So we divide, or we subtract 3x, divide by 2, and we eventually get x equals 18. So the answer is G. Oh, what is our number one science tip? Oh, oh, can I do this? Um, yes, okay, so our number one science tip is, is pretty obvious. It's the biggest one. So if you know it, then tell us, and we'll just move on to the next biggest one. Yeah, but the biggest one. that being said, the... the hey, Take the scepter so you can talk. Why, no, all right. Uh, I would say the, the easiest thing to improve, which is why we say it's our biggest tip, or the biggest, best strategy, you don't want to read the passage. You don't want to look at the graphs. You don't want to do any of that until you go through and actually read the questions. Levi, do you want to, hold on, do you want to pull up a science section real quick? Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, um, x vex. So let us go ahead and pull that up. Are you done with this? I'm gonna erase it. Yeah, might lag. Um, so if you get to the science section, go ahead and just put me on the first or second yeah, page, the word, like the first the passage. One. All right. Yeah. So. If I write here x of x, you know that. So O what? O? <laughs> Sorry, I'm O what? Maybe maybe x of x is getting attacked and they're saying, oh! Mm -hmm. um, so what we would normally do, right, is skip past all this. I, can I erase this while you go and do that since I don't have access to the yes. controls from back here? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Um, X of X, tell us, so you already know what we're doing then. Really cool setup. Oh, thank you. That is, thanks. Um, yeah, Levi, can you hit enter and go down a page? Yes. So, you already know to skip through, um, yeah, and can you make it big for me, Levi? Yes. Um, at this point, when you get to this test, right, so this is question one. You already know not to read the passage, right. Um, something you should practice though, um, I guess there's two things. If if timing is ever an issue, which it, it shouldn't necessarily be if you're not reading the passage, but it still can be, um, and solve and defense graphs. 
Uh, okay. Yes. No, you have to defense the grass. The grass. Okay. If you don't defense the grass, you know what happens? Yes, we know what U-World is. Feel free to ask us questions about that. Um, I would say that's our biggest tip. Um, if you're getting fairly good scores on science, I would say the next thing you want to make sure you know are your... Uh, in reference to the graphs, yeah. The next thing you want to know is what we had actually had Brady talk about earlier tonight, which are common questions about outside knowledge. Um, this is all recorded, so you can go back. I think you can even watch it now, watch the stream and see um, where he talked about that. It's just some of the common things that you need to know that will be tested. Um, and those are questions where the information won't be found in the passage or graphs at all. Um, let's see, make sure you're familiar with that. Um, is timing ever an issue, Vex? Um, I would say the biggest tip for the science section you already know. Um, the next best thing is to practice it and yeah, so the reason you're going to get 85 to 100 percent on UWorld and only a 27 on the practice test can be a number of things. I would say the easiest answer there is because UWorld is not the actual, like UWorld doesn't make the tests. Yep. So there's no way for them to be perfect. They do a good job of it, but there's no way for them to make questions that are going to be exactly like they will on the test because they're just people like us who are like, oh, well, we've seen enough of these that we can just make a test or so. Yes. And there's probably many more of them working on it than just the three of us. Yeah. But at the same time, they're not the people who make the ultimate decision. So yeah. their tests are either going to be too hard or too easy. Um, and it looks like for their science, or at least for what you've taken, it seems to be a little bit too easy. Yeah. So um, any any of these other resources, you uh, world or us really, or you know most things, the, nobody can do what the SAT and ACT do because in they, terms of they're not the problems. same company. So use all of that yeah. stuff for conceptual practice. Um, sometimes for time and practice, it couldn't hurt. But yeah. your measuring stick must be official practice materials. It has yeah. to be official practice materials, if, and you should save those. So don't just practice concepts with those because they're only a certain number. Vex, uh, which ACT did you take? Because if you go onto our website at, I say they're English passages for the rhetoric, questions are harder than the actual test. Yes, they are. Yeah. And they're often harder because they are ambiguous, because their questions are often not that good, in my humble opinion. So Vex, if you go to this site right there, that is our website. Hopefully you can read that. It's just nerdish.com. Um, you can create a free account. And if you don't feel comfortable having your first and last name in there, make it up. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Um, go ahead and make an account. And we have a practice ACT, which is an official. It's, it's an official practice test on the web, on the ACT website. So you can uh, take that test and it will give you a score report um, and tell you what things you're missing. So it'll let you know if, you know, they'll let you know what your most common um, topics are that are difficult for you on the science passage. So yes. if you want... I would not recommend this, but you could just do the science section on there, take it, and then see what that what you yeah. missed and what that is. I would recommend doing the whole thing because it's a one or none kind of thing. Yes. Um, um, maybe yeah. ne next step after Thanks. not reading the passage, which you which you got. Um, so X facts. Last thing. Thanks. It may it may be too obvious for you because I'm not exactly sure where you are in how good you are at the science section. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Okay. So you're solid, uh, but. Clearly not perfect. So you got nine more possible points, which means you're probably getting eight to ten questions wrong. Very anxious about the test based on the fact that I wanted 29 plus for the merit scholarships. Okay, cool. Yeah. So anxiety is a your worst killer. Nightmare. I don't know if you're anxious during the test taking or just yeah. now -ish, So uh, So let us know if anxiety is an actual issue, and we will just take it away from you. Mm -hmm. um, Put it in our back pocket. Yeah. So the next step after not reading the passage is following the path. That's what we call it. And it's taking a question like number one. And please stop us if this is too obvious for you. And it is It is a very straightforward, simple approach. But it is, if you do it consciously, I think it gets you from the 27 to something higher because you're not making as many simple mistakes or getting confused as much. It keeps yeah. confusion at bay. Let's just look at this question as an example. Based on the results of study one, the highest percent of finches on island B and island C had a beak depth of blank. Okay, and then you can look at the answer choices too. So we know immediate. Actually, can I have one of those markers? Yeah. Want me to go mess with this? Um, cool. Yeah, we're, we're actually good here. I'm not necessarily going to go All through right. the whole question. So uh, this is probably something that you do, but being very conscious about it is good too. Study one. You're going to start at study one, 
and then you're going to go to the highest percent of finches on island B. So I would say island B is probably the next thing you're looking for, so you have to find that. It's probably one of those graphs, hopefully it is. And then, so you're comparing island B and you're comparing island C. And you're looking for a beak depth. This question is, is actually nice. There's not a lot of garbage in it. Yeah. All of it is very important. But you are looking for these things specifically. There is a path between every question and the correct answer. And that is the path that you're following and you have to jump around for it. So you have no idea what's going on in the passage. Maybe you checked it out to see what type of passage it is. But now we're going from, we're looking for in study one, for island B and C, and we're comparing beak depth. Now this is the simplest question probably for this passage. So there's that. But you definitely, you are trying to do as little work as possible. This is like in English class when you're supposed to have a discussion on a book and you didn't read it. So everybody's discussing it and some, somebody says something to demonstrate they read it and some schmuck says going, going off what she said, right? And that type of thing. Then you're, then you're going to have to talk, right? And you're going to BS your way through based on the information that you've pieced together from everybody else. That's what you're doing here. You are BSing your way through this because you haven't read. You haven't read the passage and you have no idea anything about beak, beak, finch, beak depth of finches on these two made-up islands, okay? So you are BSing your way through and you're, take, you're doing as much logic as possible. This section is a logic section. It's definitely not a science section, okay? Do you have any questions on what I just said? It, it is going through here and taking pieces and looking for those things specifically and looking in smart places for them. So hopefully this is a graph. Graphs are easy, they're fast. Um, that's why you start with them, that's why you reference them first. And then you definitely you want to start at the first questions, then go to the harder questions as you go. Um, it, that is the next biggest tip we have for the science section. If, if that's obvious to you and that's not the issue, then you know, it's going to be something smaller that is probably more specific to you that maybe you can figure out if you take one of the diagnostics, um, which is free. It's free. So yeah, yeah, no, the diagnostic free. we made, um, we only have one ACT on it right now. And one SAT. You I want a 30 plus some cable, it's just sorry, yeah. But it's just reading the questions and not getting caught up in the terminology if that helps. Yeah, use a lot of the follow the logic, uh, something but it really hasn't taught me anything i don't know i think yes usually questions, questions six and seven yeah okay so let's do question six and seven here might as well i haven't looked at this passage in a long time but so okay. a researcher hypothesized that there would be more variations in the beak depths measured for the g fortis finches than there were uh than there were forced for the lab of act science oh that's what that is haven't actually used that, so I can't uh, can't tell you how great or it is or isn't. I'm sure it's helpful-ish. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. as much as you get out of it. It's an ACT science book. Well, then I can tell you it can have a lot of good advice, but it's never going to have a practice test that is the same as the actual test. Yep. And okay. that's not a shame on them. It's just kind of impossible. Um, so measured the G. fortis finches when they were forced to compete with another finch species for seeds. Do the results of study one support the hypothesis? Okay, so what I'm worried about here is study one. All right, and they're talking about the beak depths for the finches um, when they're forced to compete with another species for seeds. So they're talking about competition, G. fortis finches. Really, that's kind of all I care about right here. Um, maybe there's something else. I mean, when they're competing, what they're competing for for the for seeds. Um, same same thing is there. I want to talk about this question types. In particular, um, a lot of the questions six and seven kind of have this pattern, Vex. Um, thanks. What I would say is you want to, so there's yes, yes, no, no, and then there, <clears throat> there are explanations after it. So what you're looking for here, um, you're answering both of those, right? There's going to be, and I'm not as familiar with this as possible as I could be to make this super quick, but there's going to be contradictions here. Meaning, um, for example, G, yes, the range of beak depths measured was greater on island B than island A. So that would be, that's not contradictory. No, the range was greater. Um, okay, cool. So this one actually isn't contradictory, which is actually not a bad thing. Um, or it may be once we get more information from the graphs. Levi, do you mind going back real quick? And this thing might be in the way. Oh, leave it there. So beak depth here and beak depth here, right? This one is 
Percent. Uh, Levi, can you read that for me? Uh, top on the bottom. Top. Percent of captured finches from Island B. So it's finches from Island B. So Island B and Island A. C. This is C? Oh, yeah. Island A. Then I need A. Is up there. Oh, that actually works. So leave it here for a second. I'm going to go ahead and look at this and get my face out of the way there. So G4 Ts and G whatever. And this is when they're competing, Levi, because it has both. If not, we can scroll down and read study one. We probably should read study one. Great. So researchers captured 100 of these finches, the ones that we care about, the G4Ts, 100 of the other ones on island A. They tagged each bird, measured its beak depth, and released it. Then they calculated the percent of birds having each um, the beak depths, yada, yada, yada. Okay, cool. And I know that B is just four Ts, and then um, C is going to be... So this is actually C right here, so we don't care about this. Levi, can you... Uh, go up. All right. So in this graph, we know we have both birds. They're competing. Um, that said as much. And right now, G4 Ts, the beak length is about 24, I'm going to say. Right? It, it, it's not quite at 25. So about 24. Go ahead, Levi. Or actually, I can leave it there. So this is A, and let me write it down here. This is going to be B. Um, and for the 4 Ts here, we're talking about, is that the percentage here, Levi, and then the beak depth is down below? Hit enter yes. real quick. Yes, it is. So the beak depth, okay. So the highest percentage of beak depth is going to be, hit enter one more time for me. I want to make sure they're the same X axes. Yeah. They are. Great. So for this, it's over 30% at 10, and here it's, over, it's highest, almost 30% at 12, meaning that we do have larger or higher beak depth, right, uh, when there is competition. So let's go back to the actual question. One more page, Levi. So it's going to be oh, six. Yes. Sorry. All right. Now, the researcher hypothesized that there would be more variation in the beak depths measured when they were forced to compete. That is going to be our yes or no. That is true, so that's yes. So I don't care about H and J. I'm now already at a 50% chance of getting this right. The next thing I'm going to say is, well, is the range, let's get rid of that. Um, the range of beak depths measured for G4T finches were greater on island A, or were they greater on island B? Well, island A is where they were competing, and that's actually what they're asking for here, so it can't be G. G is what we talked about earlier, which is contradictory, meaning F is the correct answer. So X of X, hopefully you're, you were here for the whole brunt of that. I went very slowly. Um, I took my time, I explained it, I wrote it all out, but that is, in a nutshell, the approach you should take. So it's not just, um, tr you know, having having a very set structure of going to, and looking for what you're trying to find. Yeah, you mind pulling that down? Yep, okay, maybe that's news, maybe it's not. I will say, um, I really think this will help if you take the diagnostic, and odds are, if you've taken a number of practice tests, uh, the free ones, there's a chance you've already taken it. If you understand the excitement, it's a lot easier. Got some wild autocorrect going on, x -Vex. <clears throat> Experiment. Um, no. I, I would still recommend not to do that. It, so I, because you can, you can when you get to the graph and you're not sure, that's when you go and skim it. Otherwise, yeah. it's a waste of time still. Don't, don't skim the graph. As soon as you realize that you're supposed passage. to... Or graph, yes. I guess, in yeah. theory. Yeah, right, yeah. Don't, so I would say look at the passage just so you figure out what passage type it is and if you want to do that one. Because those, you know, the big, long study ones, this is... Uh, yeah, save save the, the conflicting summary. viewpoints for last. Those, those are those are very long, and so do them last. But the the follow the path thing is the, is you trying to do as little work as possible. So Sorry. when you're doing a question, the follow the path thing means if here's your passage over here, and here's number six here, and so this has a bunch of stuff here, and you find a word in here that you don't know, and you know, and you're gonna follow this. So you go here, but you don't know this word. You have to define everything in the question. Do not start going to the answer unless you're using it to help understand where you're supposed to be going. Um, but you're not supposed to be answering the question, or the, you know, figuring out an answer until you have defined everything in the question. The question will lead you on your path. That is the beginning of the path. So if there's a word that you don't know, or they talk about the relationship, they talked about in number six in that problem, they said 
uh, when there was competition. You have no idea about competition yet because you've just been talking about beak lengths, right? Or beak depth or whatever. So you have to figure out why that competition is. So that's when you read the study. So this question was hard because you had to read the study. You had to know the context. Don't skim for that first because you're going to get confused. There is too much information there to do quickly. Um, XFX, no, we don't. And that is something we will never be able to do because those are you have to pay for those. Um, unless they're all the free ones online, in which case we have some of them, but no, I, I, we don't have those. Um, if you want, we have a Discord link down below. You can click on it and you can join that, take a picture of the question and send it in. Um, and we can answer it that way. Pictures are hard to do through Twitch chat, but if you send it in through the Discord, we can answer it much easier. Yeah. If there's a specific one you want to practice go questions. Over. Also, XFX, if you're the person that I, I sent a message to, uh, a, a DM, then let us know. We can do those math problems that you posted. But if that's not you, then don't don't talk about that. But you probably have no idea what I'm re referencing if that's not you. Uh, yeah. But yeah, science science requires practice, and it require it is more so than the other sections. It responds to actively being a logical human being and BSing your way through. Um, and if you are focused on not getting confused and taking okay, not you. That makes sense. Um, yes, it is. Um, I lost my train of thought. Dang it. I don't care. Look at the... Stop Look it. at those. My gosh. Ah! Uh, <laughs> uh, it I'll requires... just start pulling up your website of you as an actor. And we can start I took that down, man. It's gone. Nah, they still have. You can still pull up this nah, stuff. No, it's impossible. It's not. I threw it out, dude. I burned it in the garbage. Yeah, the website? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, All right. Th so, this section. Not that many... Uh, concepts involved so much that you have to study for. There's some outside knowledge that you can go back and look at because uh, Brady did that earlier today. He's not Brady, I'm not Brady, that's a third guy who maybe you didn't see expects or anybody else. So this section responds very well to being logical. Be logical and stick to that. We do this five days a week. So Sunday, Sunday through Thursday, 8 to 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Yep. But next week, if you're taking it, well, it doesn't matter, but Next week, because there's an ACT, we are doing Friday as well, and probably Thursday and Friday we're doing, we're doing two and a half hours yeah, instead of just streams. 90 minutes. Is the Super Bowl this Sunday? Mm, yes. We're not streaming this yes, Sunday. Yes, we're not streaming this Sunday because it's the Super Bowl. Bowl. Hey. I'm also going to be on a plane. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Weddings. Yep. Uh, but almost every day, yeah. Yes. So what that means is do the diagnostic, do other stuff, bring questions, you know, go to UWorld and... and do those questions, and if you have a problem with their explanation, then come here, give us the problem, and we'll show you. Well, February 9th, gang, that means you still have two weeks to put the work in, um, and a lot can be done in two weeks. You'd or to put together $5 million, $6 million to pay me to take it for you. Mm -hmm. And I will do great. It's pretty low ball. And it though. won't doing, be worth your time. Only doing... The, it'll be worth their time, just not their money. That, that's, True. That's foolish, True. yeah. Um, great. We Any, also might be doing some raffles. I'm down to do a raffle or two. Yeah, we might. I do Although a raffle at this for, point, the raffle is for, usually it's for essay revisions, and yes. we don't, they're done. Yes. True. So. Are you a yeah. junior, oh, yeah, probably a junior x -Vex Yeah, I would assume For so. national merit and. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I don't see why it's sophomores. We got scores, that's for sure. We got scores. I didn't take the ACT in high school. I did not take the SAT. Thankfully. Yes. Man, the new SAT is so much nicer than the old one was. I just looked at those and I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I didn't do that. The giant headache, the old SAT. Junior, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the ACT is dope. Also, x -Vex, it seems like you're focusing on the science. What is your English score? Because the That's English the responds to, to studying more than any other section. It's For the example, easiest thing to improve. Do you know how to use commas? Do you know exactly when you're allowed to use semicolons? If you don't know those things, we will tell you and you will do better. Very quickly. Yeah, those curves have been rough. Yes ridiculous so take it or leave it. i don't know man I, I know i've always liked the act more 31 31 you can do better yep yep 29 and 32 you can definitely so that's their average they Got definitely it. get there yeah you need to know when to use a colon semicolon the four types of uses for commas on the sat act or sat um yeah if you're comfortable with that, your scores will... Oh, most... so you, you've never taken the official. That's what you're guessing you're around. They've taken practice tests. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. So as official as they get without paying for it. Right. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so again, try the diagnostic. You definitely have time. See what your score is. See what you missed. See what topics were related to it. And then you know it all. Nice. Okay. Well, what types of questions are you getting wrong? Because a 31 or 29 to 32 range means you're, you're still getting a handful of questions wrong. Do you, do you know what question types are harder for you? Yeah, because just studying on its own is going to, at this point, if you're scoring near the 30s, is going to waste your time if you're not studying specifically the things you aren't doing well. Yes. And so that's like, that's why tutors are tutors, right? We, we can find the things you don't know and then teach you them or point you in the right direction at least. Just stupid ones. Okay. Meaning what? Uh, don't do that anymore. If it's and just simple good. mistakes. Sixth. All right. Awesome. That was a nice high five. It was. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So let us know specifically. If it's something you're continually doing, make no sense of questions and then get them wrong. Y yes, uh, that might be because of the tests you're taking. Because if you're if doing, if you're not doing actual practice tests, they're they're going to be more confusing than they need to be. Oh, be I see, I see. Okay. Um, All right. So that that is an approach thing more than anything else, and you you do need to fix that. So what I would recommend, it, it's <laughs> obviously, That's, um, and, and it's it's fixable, but it's not. Oh, you need to learn this concept, and then you then it's good. If you know the concepts the second time, you go back. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm. I do not mean to be disrespectful. Like it's clear that you are studying, um, yeah. but do not study. Don't don't keep practicing and you know getting confused and getting them wrong. What I would recommend is take a lot of time on questions and ramp up your speed at the end because the ACT does require some speed. But work on accuracy first. Um, make sure that you're getting every question right. So proof three yeah. wrong. Yes. Uh, that's something that your reading score. If you have enough time, you should miss zero as long as you prove three wrong. That is our, I mean, that is the number one thing for the reading and English. If you can prove that the three answers, three of the four answer choices are wrong, obviously this makes sense. The fourth one is going to be right. Um, if you get into a habit of doing that, it becomes second nature and you actually get really quick at it and you're able to just be like, well, I know these aren't right. Okay, I'm down to these two. If I'm in a rush, I can guess, make my best educated guess and now I get a 50% chance, keep moving on. Also, uh, Yes, you do. Yeah. Yes, you do. It will... You probably have a better shot at doing that than getting, you know, a comparable increase uh, or an equal science. increase on the science. Yeah, it's easier. It's easiest to improve the English. We're assuming that English is your first language. Um, yes, if it's not, much harder. Uh, freshman year, twenty four on the reading, which is a high percentile. Yes, as a freshman, that's high. Yeah. Um, sure. If you want strategies on that, we can cover that. Um, I would say tomorrow, if you're free during this time tomorrow, come on stream, come back um, and ask. Now you do very poorly. Um, well, we can talk about strategies to that. We can talk about how to approach the sections and so on and so forth. Um, also, practicing doing uh, how you, you practice how you play. If you ever did sports kind of thing, you want to practice doing these things that are good. Proving three wrong, right? You don't necessarily have to do that on the test if you're short on time. Um, because it does take you, it might take you a little longer to answer a question. It might not. Um, but that's the best way to go through and answer the questions for accuracy. Yeah. Also, if anybody who's not XVEX is here, please ask us questions. Yeah. It's not just for XVEX, but this is but, fine if hey, everybody's they're crushing it. Um, viewing XVEX get 2 on 1 tutoring. My sister got a 35 and somewhat tutored me. Oh, yes. That can be helpful. Yes. Very good. I have worked with people who were brilliant and just couldn't teach me a thing and I hated it. Yeah. They were just so far above. But that's college stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ideally, um, it's something that she also had to study to get there. Otherwise, it's it's hard to teach something that comes naturally. It is Very much true. more difficult to teach something that comes naturally. Unless you're a teacher. Well, unless you've put, but she's not <laughs> useful. So then, kudos to her that it just comes naturally. Sisters. But that's, well, yeah, I mean, you probably also. Because yeah. she's probably annoying, right? Because. You don't have, well, we don't have older sisters. Probably we both have older brothers. Yes. Uh, I can imagine. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, any questions you have, that's what we're here for. So, I mean, we're off in the next minute. Ish. Sorry. Um, but if you, I don't think she that she studied, that's why she might struggle with me. Yeah, I, four, five, six years ago when I took the test, I couldn't have told students how to do well on it. I, yeah. I just could do it. Right now, I, after having done this for a long time, um, I know how to teach people how to do it, right? And that's nothing against your sister. It's just something she doesn't have a need for. So she I personally do, do have a legitimate issue with your sister. I'm not, 
Not a fan. Big time, not a fan. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, that's about it for tonight, though. Guys, check out the free diagnostic. You just make an account that's all free, um, and it'll send you or it'll have your diagnostic score report yeah. with all the topics you missed. In, mm-hmm. Also, yeah. come back tomorrow. Do you know? Do some. You guys do tutoring via Skype or anything? Yes, yes we, do. we do. Our yes. website is down below. Yes. you can check that out. Private. We privately yeah. tutor as well because this is free and that doesn't yes. pay the bills. That's true. Um, Unless the bills are free, and then it does. Yeah, if, if someone were paying our bills, then it'd entirely. be fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not both of us. We don't. Oh, we could. No, no, we're not going to go be tutors at the <laughs> same time. So That's annoying. so rough. No, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we do tutor um, yeah. via Skype and Google Hangouts because I like Google better. Yeah, however you want to contact us, you can do that. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Check out our stuff. Yeah. Have questions prepared to, for yeah. tomorrow. Check out the free diagnostic. Uh, there's a chance if you're taking practice tests, you've already done it, in which case just fill in the answers with what you've already done. Also, expect, depending you on how much you want to pay, um, <laughs> if you'd like, put yeah, your sister in contact with us. We will hire her. You pay us money to have her tutor you, and we'll give her some money. That's... So that's a possibility, too. Um, might take a little longer to set up, but yeah. possible. Um, that's so ridiculous. Okay. Um, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah. See you tomorrow, XX. Have questions. Questions. <laughs>